All right, how we doing guys? Let's go ahead and give it up to the Zinger Nation. And of course, highly on here, founder and CEO, Thomas Healy. Are you guys ready? Cause I'm ready. Let's go ahead, let's dive right in. First, I'd like to congratulate you on the success of recognizing the first revenue from the hybrid EX powertrain. Thank you. Now, of course, we did hear on the call that there was some supply chain issues and some of the orders had gone into Q1 here. Mm -hmm. How are those supply chain issues going and what were the specific components that were kind of giving you guys some issues? Yeah, so 2021 was the year of supply chain, even outside of Hylion. You talk to anyone in the automotive industry, people who never had to deal with supply chain, they're like, yeah, I had to dive in and you know go see suppliers and see how we can fix things. You know, we were affected by it. We weren't the only ones. Ultimately, you know, things come down to like there's one or two missing components in a whole system that has a big bill of material. Um, you know, we did see things like lead times push out on, on trucks. That was a big one. Uh, we saw that actually uh, affect both of our product lines. Uh, on the hybrid, some of the reasons that products were or deliveries were moved into 2022 were actually because the fleets couldn't even get the chassis to bring them to us to have us install. Uh, but then it also went down to like little connectors, things that, uh, you know, cost $2. If you can't source them, you know, you can't ship a truck. So, uh, so we think we got a good handle on it. We got line of sight for everything we need for 2022. And uh, we're actually already starting to look at 23 deliveries as well. Excellent. Let's go ahead. Let's get into the interest of the hybrid EX right now. And how's that moving along now? Yeah, so we definitely have customers interest in the EX. Uh, but one of the things that we mentioned on the last earnings call is we've seen a market shift uh, happen where when we launched or initially came up with the EX product, we thought that you know hybrid would be kind of the first step into electrification. And then we would go into full electric range extender vehicles. We're hearing fleets say, look, I just want to move into the full electric solutions. There's so much market demand. There's so much of a tailwind going on right now and moving to full electric, really hitting those very, very strong ESG or climate change initiatives uh, that we see that fleets are kind of gravitating away from the hybrid and wanting to make the full leap into the hyper truck. Obviously, uh, that's a good thing for us as well as, you know, we've got a product that can meet those needs. Uh, but what we've mentioned message to the world is we're going to keep shipping the hybrid. We have fleets that are interested in it, but uh, more of our attention is going to be going to the hyper truck. We expect a couple million dollars in revenue this year from the hybrid. Uh, and then as we go into 23, you know, we'll be doing controlled fleet trials of the hyper truck and we'll be starting production later in the year. Yeah, it seems like the, you know, the interest to innovate is actually higher than expected. So yeah. definitely not a bad thing. Let's go into, are we still seeing some shortages on the OEM production wise? Um, trucks coming out slower than what you expect? Yeah, so I think the, uh, the OEMs got hit with like a backlog of they were missing little components. Like we knew one of the OEMs was uh, uh, missing some like stuff that goes on the dash. And so they couldn't make trucks. Some of them were missing uh, controllers. So, uh, so ultimately what happened is uh, fleets were still demanding trucks, but the OEMs weren't able to ship them. I think the OEMs have solved a lot of their supply chain issues. Maybe some things have longer lead times, but we're now in a, a phase where the OEMs are trying to catch up. And uh, ultimately, you know, that that's just going to take time, right? And so what we're seeing is 2022, any truck that an OEM is going to be made is, is, is going to make is already sold, right? Fleets have already claimed all those build slots and fleets are now actually starting to reserve build slots in 23. And so, you know, if you go order a brand new truck today, you've got over a year till you're going to be seeing it. Wow, that's incredible. Let's talk about a little bit about the relationships you have with the OEMs. And of course, uh, going into 2023, yeah. future production, how is that relationship going? Um, do you see any anybody kind of standing out that's saying, like, we want to be that guy? Yeah. So we had come forward and expressed, we're going to go to market on the hyper truck with a Peterbilt as our chassis of choice. And so uh, the truck you got to drive today was a Peterbilt truck. And uh, you saw it's a, you know, it's a great truck on the inside. It's a very smooth, very drivable truck. Many drivers love Peterbilt vehicles. That's where we're going to launch. But ultimately, the long term goal is this is a OEM agnostic powertrain solution. So you also saw our hybrid product and you saw a bunch of installs taking place. We had trucks from all the manufacturers out there, uh, you know, doing installs. And so that's that's really the long term vision. But we wanted to be successful at launch. And Peterbilt's been a great uh, collaborator on that effort in order to get this vehicle out there. Yeah, I think it's awesome. You guys are staying local with a lot of the decisions you guys are making. Yeah, they they build the trucks just a couple hours north of here in Texas. So it's uh, it's been a good partnership. 
definitely. All right, so let's talk about the orders. Now we have over 150 backed by deposits. Is there somewhat of a goal here for the uh, kind of the orders? Do you have a, a goal set? Yeah, so to give a little background and color on it and then can talk about the goals of where we're heading. So uh, so we, we've gotten a lot of interest in the hyper truck and uh, you know the world has seen us announce reservations. We're nearing about 2,000 reservations for the truck. What we actually started doing is working with fleets and starting to establish build slots. Uh, so fleets were saying, all right, I'm ready to take these trucks. I want to take delivery of them. And we're having fleets put in deposits to actually get firm uh, build slot commitments. And that's those first 150 trucks. Uh, the plan is still continue to grow that as we go forward. Um, you know, we want, we're working with the fleets now. Uh, fleets are coming in for ride and drives, getting to experience it. And then, you know, some of them are willing to say, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Others are saying, hey, I still want to go through more demo periods, more, you know, trials, uh, and others are, are kind of jumping in. And it really just depends on how a fleet normally adopts new technology. Uh, some fleets will come in and say, all right, one or two trucks, I'll try it, I'll run them for six months, and if it works, I'll start buying them. Others will say, all right, I'm going to start with 10, 20, 30, whatever the number is, and, and go into larger volumes. All just depends on the fleet's buying habits. Excellent. So let's uh, let's talk about the for the f first half of 2022. Um, of course, you're right now you're kind of more in the verification process. Mm -hmm. um, how is this timeline being completed right now? And how have the test drives gone? Yeah. So test drives have exceeded our expectations. Hopefully they exceeded your expectations that coming in. Um, so, no, been a really positive response, honestly, on that end. What our timeline looks like, though, is we are in the design verification phase right now. We are building more units, making improvements to them. Uh, those are starting to, to get out there now. Uh, that will carry us through later into this year where we actually start controlled fleet trials in the latter part of 2022. We'll then carry those fleet trials into 23. As we're going through that process, we're also going to be going through uh, EPA CARB NHTSA certification processes. And then that'll put us on track to be able to start production in the latter part of 23. And that's when we're going to start drawing on those 150 production slot orders. That's when we're going to start delivering those. Excellent. Seems exciting. Let's let's get into here um, a little bit into the second half. We're going to get into some winter testing. Yes. Yep. That seems exciting. I'm from Colorado. <laughs> I deal with the winter. I know the salt life. That's definitely something to deal with. Um, so has there been a kind of a location set for this winter testing? Yeah, so uh, up northern part of the U.S. is where we do it, right? Uh, we, there are actually some great test tracks up there. Uh, we've brought our hybrid system up there to, to go through validation. One thing many people might not realize is road conditions are brutal in the winter, right? The salt, the, uh, some places even put like an acid down on the roads uh, to melt the snow. That eats through electric components, wiring harnesses, connectors, right? It's brutal on them. So what we've been able to do is take a lot of the learnings that we had from hybrid, carry those into the hyper truck uh, so that we kind of learn from the mistakes of the past. Uh, but we obviously still got to go through winter testing of the hyper truck. And uh, we'll be doing that here you know, after summer and not too, uh, doesn't seem too long away now. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we'll all be excited to hear what goes on in the winter testing. Let's, <laughs> let's be, go ahead. Wait for the videos of the trucks drifting around oh, a uh, snow covered track, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's just say the ice and trucks usually don't go hand in hand, but definitely <laughs> some testing involved. Uh, let's talk about the rise in employee count. I've been seeing yep. that and I think that's a very important here. So explain how the rise is coming and also some great members of the board added. Yeah, so the success of what we're doing is all based on amazing talent that we have in this organization, and we're continuing to grow that. And so we're at a little over 200 individuals in the company now. I think we've got probably 40 or 50 job openings uh, that we're trying to fill right now, and we're going to continue to carry that through uh, 2023 and continue to grow. So, or I'm sorry, 2022 and continue to grow. It's a, So it's an exciting time. And we're looking for great talent, so uh, if anyone's interested in getting into the electric space, come let us know. You know, we got a careers page on online that uh, we got all the job postings there. But uh, that's really what you know allows us to do the make the great products is the people that we have, and then also as you mentioned, we uh, we just added Jay Craig to our board of directors. Uh, Jay's a former CEO of Meritor and chairman of Meritor, so industry veteran. Uh, everyone in this space knows him, has a ton of respect for him. And uh, we think he's going to bring a lot of value to the organization. 
Excellent. Well, hey, you guys hear it out there. If you guys are interested in joining, definitely look that on up. An opportunity. I, I definitely, if, if you haven't had a chance to come check out the factory and you're interested, I, I tell you, come check it out. And Austin's not a bad place to live either. <laughs> definitely not a bad place at all. Let's Especially go. in the winter. <laughs> For sure. I, I come from Colorado, so I, I, I just left 20 degrees. So definitely enjoying the 70s here. Yep. Uh, let's get into what the future brings, really. I mean, one of the things is, of course, we've moved now from the hybrid to the ERX. Mm -hmm. What does the future bring for Hyon? Yeah, so a lot of exciting things. I mean, one is moving the ERX into production. That's obviously a huge milestone for the company. But we've also laid out a very exciting roadmap for the hypertruck. So everyone knows we're starting with natural gas as a fuel source today. We do see hydrogen as this future of where hopefully this industry does head. The question is, when will it happen, right? And that's where what we're doing is we're saying, hey, natural gas is ready today. It's available. It's low cost, great emissions profiles. Let's use it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move into a fuel agnostic generator that can run on either natural gas or hydrogen, and then eventually move into a fuel cell solution, uh, which would be run on hydrogen. And the really cool thing, though, is that we've designed our vehicle so that the only thing that really needs to change as you progress from one generator to the next is the actual generator under the hood. The batteries, the e-axles, the software, the controls, all that stays the same. We just continue to ev uh, evolve that generator under the hood and we can take advantage of new fuel sources as they become available. Well, definitely the last question I have to ask is more to, to you. And I have to say from going from graduate school to now, yeah. how has this journey really felt and, and has taken you to, to new levels? I mean, it's truly been a surreal experience. Uh, loving it, it's amazing, right? It's, it's awesome to see the level of customer interest and excitement we're getting. I mean, when, uh, when you bring a fleet in or, or an individual like yourself in and they get to actually go experience the truck and they're smiling ear to ear when they get out of it and they're like, holy crap, I can see how this is going to revolutionize this industry, right? That's what makes this so exciting and you know, seeing that path to really being able to have an impact and ultimately not just bringing forward a technology that can save fleets money, but one that can have a drastic, drastic impact on emissions, right? And you know, if we can combine those two things together and deliver a rock solid solution, that's going to really have a big impact on this industry. Excellent. Well, I, I saw an interview with you and you had mentioned that the excitement kept growing here. Yeah. And I could definitely say that now it's true. I've seen the excitement and you could definitely tell it's growing and just getting started. So what's your uh, your little uh, tidbit of what was it like to actually drive the truck? So what I would say is at the end of the day, you know, I, I got to drive a diesel and your truck and it, yes, you know, there's going to be plenty of companies that are going to come out with specs of electric and there's going to be a move to electric, but it's all about two different things to me. It's about what's going to be the competitive advantage and how is it going to be to the experience? Because I mean, at the end of the day, truckers are going through the experience right now and they're not enjoying it. Let's just say it's a tough um, truck to drive yeah. a diesel truck, right? Yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. A lot of them are probably referring it to as just a job. I think this can change that to being an enjoyable experience. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I think there's going to be some truck uh, drivers that will probably even think about this as they probably weren't even thinking about driving a truck as a career, and this could open that up. I think that's uh, definitely a competitive have. And when we get into cost, we all know um, completely changing over fleets or going to full electric is going to be pretty expensive. Yep. There's somewhere in the middle there that definitely is going to make sense. And I feel like you guys are trying to definitely meet that need. Yeah, no, we, we think so. We try to approach all these problems with what's practical, what makes sense for fleets to actually adopt. And if you look at the infrastructure that's out there, natural gas makes a ton of sense today. And when you can deliver a vehicle that's electric and has a thousand mile range, uh, I don't think there's much else out there that can do that. So. Hey, well, you guys heard it here. The solution here that Hylion's definitely offering seems interesting, and you guys check it out for yourself. Like always, story is everything, and that's the story of Hylion. Thanks for visiting us. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.